Hi, it's Misha Edwards, broker owner of Community First Real Estate right here in Ridgeland, Mississippi. And I have been in real estate, just a little background. I have been in real estate for 17 years. Prior to getting into real estate, I did a couple of things uh, in the real estate industry, such as mortgage lending, as well as credit repair. And I entered into the world of real estate and that's just where I belong. So I wanted to come in and just educate you guys today on three major, three huge mistakes that you can make when you are taking on a listing. So we all know listings are where it's at. You know, everybody wants to be the listing agent and everybody is going after that seller. So many times when agents go into a listing presentation, they go in and they are afraid to tell the seller what they need to hear because they know it's not what the seller wants to hear, right? So some of those things that a seller needs to hear is the smell of their home. If their smell smells like pet, you need to bring that to their attention because that could be the very thing that stops their house from selling. Also, if the house isn't clean, that's another factor. Nobody wants to walk through other people's mess. So you may want to gently suggest a cleaning person. I do have uh, recommendations for the following type of people. Someone that can come out and possibly clean your car carpet. Someone that can come out and professionally clean your home. And y'all, if the seller can't foot the cost, that may be an expense that you'll have to take on. But I would not suggest taking on that expense until that listing agreement has been signed. Because we know that sellers will have you do things and then they change directions, okay? So you need to have something in place where you're protected if you go ahead to perform a service prior to the home actually going live on your listing MLS. Okay, another one, number two. So number one was telling the sellers what they wanna hear versus what they need to hear. Number two, price. We go in, some people go in and tell the seller, well, you know, the comps show this, but then as soon as the seller buck against what you said, then you'll conform to what they want versus what they need in order to get the property sold. And that's only going to backfire because once you put that home on the market for that higher price and it don't sell, then you got a problem. So let me share a recent story with you. One, me and one of my team members went on a listing appointment recently and the neighborhood had direct sales. And so we pulled those comps. We went over the comps with the seller and he knew that our price was correct, but he wanted 10,000 over the suggested price. And so we told him, even if we put the house on the market at this price, it's going to have to appraise. And he said, well, I recently had an appraisal on the property and I know that you're priced right on your comps, but I want to go 10,000 over. Even if it don't appraise, I want the buyers to come out of the pocket that overage in order to purchase his home. Well, that isn't what the market dictates, right? None of that of what he's saying is happening in his particular area. And so I explained that to him. And so he went on to tell me that he was going to interview other agents. And the day, the next day he told me that he was going to go with another company and which was fine with me because once I saw his expectations were not realistic in his market, then I knew he was going to be a challenge to work with pretty much. And so I, of course, I've been following the listing, right? Because why wouldn't I? If I did, I wouldn't be a realtor, right? But anyway, so he listed the property at what he wanted to list it for with this particular agent. And needless to say, well, they did go under contract, right? They went under contract, but they are two weeks out from their original 
closing date. And I feel like the reason they are out from their closing date is because they overpriced the property. It appraised low. And so they're trying to figure out how they're going to get that overage from the buyer. And the buyer is likely not willing to do it. And I'm almost certain that's what it is. But don't set false expectations with your seller. And number three, telling your, buy, telling your seller or telling your potential seller that you have a buyer that's interested in the property and you don't. That's the oldest trick in the book. Because as soon as you get that property listed, they're gonna wanna know where's that uh, buyer you told me you had in this price point. And you, has not, you have not shown this house not one time, but you, yet you claim you had a buyer that was looking in this particular price point. And then you have, so all of these things can come back to bite you. But if you tell, listen to this, if you tell your seller that, okay, you know, we need to address this and we need to address this. And this is what the neighborhood is dictating between this price range. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this home marketed and we're going to get you to the closing table. You're setting realistic expectations because you're going to market that home to get it sold. You told them what they need to do on the front end prior to putting the house on the market. So you're positioning the property to be able to sell. Presenting a seller with false expectations is only going to bring heartache on you. So that's my rant for today. And I, I hope that you guys will subscribe to my channel and I'll bring you weekly tips from my 17 years of experience as a licensed real estate agent slash broker of 12 years. So I look forward to seeing your feedback in the comments. And if you have any questions about anything that you would like me to discuss in, pre in more episodes, please put them in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Again, this is Misha Edwards and I'm coming to you from Ridgeland, Mississippi.